Okay, so this is uh, what's new in JSIPFS. Um, can you just do a little overview of uh, where we're at, where we've been, and where we're going? It's going to be very exciting. Uh, so this is me. Uh, I'm Alex Botsides. I am aching brain on most internets. Um, you can find me on Twitter and GitHub and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I work for Protocol Labs, and I am the lead maintainer uh, on JSIPFS. So what is JSIPFS? In case you don't know, it's uh, an implementation of IPFS and all the supporting protocols completely written in JavaScript, mostly written in JavaScript. There is some WASM in there. Why not? Yeah, it gets about 5,000 downloads a week. Um, and it runs in all the places, most of the places that uh, JS runs. Uh, so in the browser, um, which is amazing, um, Node, Electron. Uh, and the typical focus has been on places that GoIPFS can't run is why we're so keen on improving the browser support. Uh, there are loads of people building really cool stuff on top of uh, JSIPFS. Uh, of course, notice, noticeably uh, Microsoft, uh, who launched ION, which we've talked about a little bit. And you'll hear loads more from Daniel later on. Um, so what have we been doing? What have we been up to? Mostly we've been trying to ship things. Um, so if you look at the kind of the releases that we've been doing, we've done 10 uh, releases in the last 12 months. There have been uh, quite a few point releases in between this, um, bug fixes and that kind of thing. But these are the ones that deliver uh, new functionality. Um, as you can see, we're trying to, we're trying to get the, uh, the number of days between releases down so that we uh, try to avoid big bang releases and do um, sort of a release early, release often kind of approach uh, and small digestible chunks because nobody likes when you uh, upgrade something and everything explodes, it's better than a few little things explode. So what have you actually shipped? I mean, we shipped loads of stuff. Um, I'm not gonna go through all these lists because there's too much. Um, but yeah, so you can see like going back through May, loads of things, you know, supposed to be 1.5, that was enormous. Async catcher of balls, that was enormous. Um, those are really good fun stuff. Um, so a portable request, that was something that landed uh, recently. That means that you can now time out uh, requests um, and abort things. So like if things go into your bits or want list and et cetera, and you cancel the request and they get removed. Um, but yeah, some of the big features, uh, the async iterable refactor. So we have this, we had this API that um, used pull streams um, and it was, it worked and it was great. Uh, it was quite hard to use for beginners because Pull streams aren't a native feature of JavaScript, so you have to learn the API of a, of a whole ecosystem of modules. Um, and it just, it made life quite complicated in terms of like debugging, um, because the stack traces didn't really have all that stuff that was all very much that was very uh, useful. Um, and it was, a, it was basically a ground up rewrite. So, you know, on the, ape, on the surface, it looks like just some API changes, but it actually went all the way down right through the networking stack to the very base of like the p2p um and now like the amount of code that we managed to delete by doing this is incredible um so it's much smaller and easier to debug uh unix of sp 1.5 is a feature that we shipped uh this adds metadata to um to unix fs files so initially it's just uh, the file mode and the modification time uh, which means that you could you could mount this um, as like your MFS or something. You could mount it under Fuse and have the uh, have a, a native place within IPFS to store any file modifications, like executable and read, you know, uh, world -read readable, writable, that kind of thing. Uh, it uses familiar uh, tools such as Touch and Chmod to make these changes to the files. Keeping it small, we're trying to we're trying to make it small. Like I say, we we run in the browser, so we're very sensitive to the uh, bundle size, um, and the bundle size is quite big. So over time, uh, you can see we've oh that's wrong, seventeen point five percent reduction. Not really. It's about the same size as it was. We had this this bump in the middle, which is uh, a bit of a is actually a, a, just a misconfiguration. But we we kind of went up and then we go down, and we're we're always trying to to make it smaller because it's too big. It's way too big. Why is it so big? This is why it's so big. 
if you look on the right, the source, that's kind of, that's actually JSIPFS. Um, it's actually a tiny, tiny section of the, of the bundle. Um, most of it is things like Node Forge um, for doing, which basically means that's used for by Libp to p for doing all the encryption uh, when you're sending stuff backwards and forwards uh, on the network. Um, you'll see there's there's a few implementations of uh, like a big number and BNJS, so they both do very similar things. Uh, and there's also JSBN uh, in Node Forge, so trying to target these kind of things. Uh, for remo for removal um, and refactoring would be great. And so, like JavaScript now has big numbers, right? We can actually use uh, big numbers. But if you if you um, if you look at the documentation for this, the first thing it says pretty much is not suitable for use in cryptography. It says, <laughs> why? 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 So we still need some kind of way of doing like handling uh, numbers that are bigger than the. Uh, the size that JavaScript can address, which is super tedious. But yeah, so we're forever trying to remove dependencies and, and make these things smaller because because it's it's basically this. The node modules before it is the one of the heaviest objects in the known universe. What else are we trying to do? We're trying to make it fast. Um, done quite a lot of work trying to improve the performance of JS RPFS because because JS is slow, right? Um, I mean, thankfully, most of the things that we do are actually network bound. Um, so the the slow thing, the thing that we can't make JS faster at really is doing CPU bound things. Um, but we can make other things faster. So uh, if you compare um, the transfer speeds between JS IPFS 38 and 46, so 46 was released last week. 38 was a year ago, almost a year ago. 36 was a year ago. I don't have stats for 36. I do have stats for 38. And between 38 and 46, we've seen a 600% speed increase, depending on the size of the file. And basically, the, the bigger the file gets, the bigger the increase gets, uh, which is incredible. And we're pretty happy with that. And the reason, there's a few a few reasons why this has got faster. One is we've adopted uh, BitSwap 1.2, uh, which um, allows you to uh, prioritize <coughs> sending blocks to other peers um, among other improvements but we've also spent time just optimizing the existing implementation um, so we just identify some bottlenecks and remove them and we've seen an enormous speed up and this we're just getting started we're just getting started um, other things we've been working on is the uh, time it takes to import files so if uh, i ran this benchmark earlier today um, adding a directory of 2.34 gigabytes of files between 200 bytes and 200 megabytes uh, JSRBFS 36 um, versus 46, there was a 22% speed increase, um, which is quite quite impressive. Uh, and also, also if you look, it's a little bit faster than Go IPFS, which is fantastic. It's nice to be it's nice to be faster at something. Um, so where are we going next? What's next? So next up, we've got uh, TypeScript support. Like this is pretty much the number one requested. Um, feature like there are so many typescript shops out there who really really want to use typescript um and we're so we're, we're adding it at the edge of the library so we're not is the like the kind of the truism that is that uh every uh every typescript developer knows javascript but not every javascript developer knows typescript so we don't necessarily want to convert the whole library to typescript because it, it, it lowers um it makes this the pool of potential contributors smaller um, raises the barrier to entry. So what we're doing is we're going to we're going to ship TypeScript definitions of all our external interfaces, so the people coding against JSIPFS can use it uh, as if it were a native um, TypeScript project. Um, and we're hoping hoping to get that out. It was well, going to come out this quarter, but I think it slipped a little bit. But it's definitely very high on the priority list. Um, also, React Native support. We really want to get JSIPFS running React Native. Um, it's, again, it's a it's a a very commonly requested uh, feature. Uh, we want to be able to like this is a really interesting one. So sharing a running node between single origin browser tabs. So if you have a website and it's using JSIPFS and you open a new tab, at the moment it has to spin up a new JSIPFS node, uh, which will have you know possibly has it has the same peer ID and you know you have to you have to make all those network connections again and and it's using the same storage and this is kind of bad. So what we want to do is move. Uh, an IPFS node into a shared worker, or at least 
allow the website to deploy it in a shared worker uh, and then you will be able to access the shared worker from all the different tabs uh, which will reduce the amount of um, like CPU you're using and network uh, resource and that kind of thing and then also it could not actually be in the shared worker it could be actually be using uh, IPFS desktop um, uh, and if you if you establish that kind of communication channel between your web app running in a in one or more tabs and a central node um, on your machine then it makes actually then adopting those changes much easier uh, we're going to refactor the pinning system um, because it's it works but it's quite slow uh, and the performance gets worse over time um, so we've got some plans to move all the pins into the data store and our early benchmarking has shown some very promising numbers uh, which will bring that file import time down even further um, which would be amazingly good dht why we'd love to have a dht uh, at the moment the go ipfs team are massively refactoring their dht um, and at some point it will stabilize and there will be a specification written and then we will implement that specification in javascript and that's kind of like the last the last uh missing bit of functionality really to be a fully fledged um participant on the ipfs network because it's never really been a a proper um, priority before because because we're focusing on running in the browser um, most browser nodes are not dialable so there's no point saying to the d um, like there's no point advertising the providing of cids on the dht if no one can connect you so it's never really been a um a priority but more and more people are using it in node um, at that point it becomes very important to to have an implementation that is stable and fully featured and works uh, we have a roadmap so if you follow the url to um, that's right there. I'm not going to read it out because it would make no sense. Um, but yeah, if you, if you uh, visit the roadmap, you can see what's uh, been slated to appear in upcoming releases. Um, and you can see like where you can help. Uh, which just leads me on to say thank you to all our contributors. So here's a list of all the people who have contributed to, this is just the IPFS, the JS IPFS repo. There are plenty more across the ecosystem uh, and it's amazing. So thank you all very much. Uh, you, you make the project a success. Uh, questions. Awesome. Thank you very much for the update, Alex. Just quickly looking through here. Uh, we've got a couple questions for JS IPFS. Uh, what do you see as the relationship between JS IPFS and Rust IPFS, given that Rust can produce WebAssembly and run in a browser? Well, I mean, it's great that there's more implementations of IPFS out there, I think. Um, you know, uh, I think each implementation is going to do things that make sense to the platform that it, that it targets. Um, so you may see like non-idiomatic APIs from Rust, I guess. Um, whereas the JS one will always try to be the closest to, you know, what you would expect as a JavaScript developer. Um, but I mean, it's great. It's totally great. Awesome. And next question, for everyone who's using JS IPFS at the moment, what's the best recommended complete TypeScript effort to use right now until official TS support is launched? Uh, so I think uh, definitely Type um, has a bunch of definitions for the interfaces already. Um, that would, I mean, I think that's what, that's what you would do. Great. And have you given some thought about doing remote requests like proxy requests via running desktop IPFS? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I mentioned it in the talk just now. Um, if we define these kind of uh, interfaces between the running code and, and like the API that's expected on the remote the remote node, um, it becomes much easier to then adopt those kind of things. But yeah, it's definitely something that we're, we're interested in looking at to you know, propose things on the repo. Great. All right. I think that's it for questions. There's one from Stefan, but I'm going to leave that one uh, for a Dean in the Go IPFS talk. I'm uh, talking about metrics. Um, but thank you very much, Alex, for, for coming and talking to us. And uh, if you have any more questions for Alex, feel free to put them in the chat or in the Q&A, um, and we can answer those ad hoc.